So, I did an audio video on uh, lab stories, lab lab stories, lab stories, uh, Emily Sanders series. Um, that right now they are making into their main project because I guess the plan is to um, once one story is done to you know once one story is done as the main uh, story. They're going to focus on another story and maybe under the character to be the next story, the next main project feature story uh, that they will go with. And Emily Saunders is the one that they're working on right now. And it's basically the latest chapter, if you will, or series. And basically it's entitled, it's entitled, I think, Something We've Got to Do. And basically, as I mentioned before, to catch you guys up on the whole Emily Saunders uh, situation, she is a, oh, she was, I should say, a regular girl, kind of like, I guess you could say, scientist, what, what have you, at a company that got exposed to some chemicals that basically gave her super elastic powers. And what these powers allow her to do is be able to shapeshift into whatever she wants or even melt down into pure liquid goo. And, you know, she ends up having fun with her husband, fiance called Jason, or Jacob, I should say. She has fun with him when it comes to these powers, but then she's not, but then we find out she's not the only one that's been exposed. We find out that her boss um, has also, at least one of the higher ups above her, has also been exposed. Her name is Kathleen, and Kathleen obviously has a thing for Jacob as well. So there's a situation where she kidnaps Jacob and everything, and so on, and tries to take Emily's place, and so you know, so on and so forth. And we do find out that one of the things that kind of hurts Emily a little bit, maybe Kathleen in return, is the fact that they could drain each other of the, you know, not of the powers essentially, but drain each other of the goo basically making them weaker and weaker and giving them time to have to recover. Well, basically, we find out throughout this whole series, because there are a couple of series chapters that come before this, that Emily and Kathleen are not the only ones with powers of the shape-shifting. We find out there is a, another one called, I um, can't think of a name, like home. Uh, uh, Manta Ray or Milady or whatever her name is. And there's a short, she's a part of a couple of shorts anyway, where she ends up, I guess you could say, barring Emily's husband, fiance Jacob, for a while, and even uses her powers to, I guess, shape shift him or at least tap into his shape shifting powers, because I guess he's got some too, I don't know, uh, and turn him into a certain uh, male genitalia, if you will, that she absorbs into her body via a certain passage. And then we have like a follow-up where this other girl who used to be an adult film star, still currently is, I guess, who used to work with Jacob called Tila. She has powers as well. She disguises herself as ice cream. She gets swallowed down, vored, if you will, by uh, this other girl. Um, this manta ray girl, whatever you want to call her. And uh, basically, she ends up getting absorbed by the male genitalia that Jacob's become that's inside um, Menle um, uh, Melinda or manta ray, whatever, you want to, whatever her name is that she goes by. And Emily has encountered all of them. Emily actually encountered Tila twice because she was also able to become like a VCR temporarily, put a tape inside of her uh, VCR form or part of her VCR <laughs> form. And I do apologize for those notifications right there. Uh, that's something you're going to deal with when you record uh, on your uh, phone. But anyway, um, she's encountered Tila before, not once, but twice in chapter two, series two, if you will, where the first time was to her going uh, going inside a VHS tape that she found under her bed and she shapeshifted part of her body into a VHS, you know, VCR, if you will, I should say. And then, then the second time is when Tila actually came to her house 
and they got a little intimate to the point that Tila kind of almost completely melted her, made her become like basically putty in her hands. And I guess that's what led to the um, Tila doing what she did in the uh, in the Mantua Milady little short, if you will, to try to get Jacob back for Emily, you know, and so on. But anyway. Series two is basically, you know, Emily, you know, having fun with her powers, Kathleen trying to have fun with her powers, you know, even though she doesn't kind of, get, kind of understand that Jacob is happily married with Emily and, and all that. Um, there's moments where Kathleen encounters the in-laws, you know, basically Jacob's parents and Jacob's mom basically, I guess, has some powers as well and melts her com and uses this her powers, I guess, whatever they are, to melt at Kathleen right through the floor, make a sheep right through the floor and everything. Um, but anyway, they do end up meeting up with a couple of other girls who have similar powers. Uh, Emily does it first. And these girls basically have powers that allow them to fuse somewhat together into what is known as a tree of debauchery. And they have a friend of their friend of Emily's, and I think even Kathleen's trapped there. And just one situation from another happens, and in the end, Kathleen ends up realizing, okay, maybe she went too far with this whole thing when it came to Jacob and Emily, and decides not only for a truth to be made. But realizing, you know, that she just needs to accept that Jacob and Emily are together and that the love is too strong for even her to kind of take, uh, kind of, um, I guess you could say, extinguish. And she takes Emily to Jacob. They reunite. They have some kind of off panel, off screen fun, uh, you know, together after the reunion. And then that's what kind of leads us to the situation with both her and Kathleen, where they realize, hey, we just. You know, we might be at a truth now. We might become best friends, if not more. But we have to get a lot out of our system. We have to still get, you know, a lot of aggression and stuff out of our system. And that's what we're kind of at right now uh, with the story series, where it's basically them doing whatever it takes to, you know, like I said, get the, you know, get that out of their system, um, if you will. And the way they do it is a you know, they make out and everything. They start fusing together, not completely into one yet, and I'll get into that in a moment, but they fuse, basically merge together, mix together to the point that they, be, they to, to the point that they become somewhat, you know, like floats, like little uh, Thanksgiving floats floating in the sky, and then they basically melt and merge together where you see a bunch of hands and legs, and next thing you know, all of a sudden, they're starting to become some kind of like version of Stonehenge, if you will. And then they start kind of, you know, getting into it with each other. Not, you know, not like, you know, like not like they did beforehand because they had done this before when they were like enemies, but more along the lines of friendly competition, you know, just to get a lot of this, you know, out of their system. And they just go back and forth. And it gets to the point now to where, you know, I think we're getting close to the end. And what I feel is going to happen is one of two things. One of two things I feel is going to happen. And I felt the same way kind of still with Metamorphosized to Malleability, which is Desi Art's story over at DeviantArt, which she took a break from at the end of this week, but will resume next week, maybe even resume tomorrow with a little Halloween story, but we'll see, because she does a Halloween story uh, once in a while. But anyway, it kind of, kind of reminds me of that somewhat, where I think it could go, because I've always believed with the Metamorphosis to Malleability story that eventually... Uh, eventually, we're going to have Briella, who has the super elastic, stretchy, melty powers and all that. Uh, I have a feeling that eventually we're going to have Crystal, her fiancé, gain similar powers, either courtesy of Briella herself or Briella recreating the formula that gave her the powers and thus, it helps, and thus she helps successfully give Crystal the same powers or something. I've always felt like in the end, it's going to result not only Crystal getting... Uh, the same kind of powers, but it's going to end up with them fusing together into one. That's what I feel it's going to lead towards eventually. They're going to fuse into one 
become one individual, not permanently, but temporarily to, you know, basically, you know, have some, I guess you could say, very intimate sexual fun with each other of the LGBTQ type. And I feel the same is probably going to happen here. But here's where it differs, though, between Briella's, uh, not Briella, but Desi Art's story, Metamorphosis and Malability, and the situation between, or the possible situation between Crystal and Briella that may happen or may not happen, but may happen. Here's the big uh, difference, if you will. Here's the big difference, you know, from the similarity. You know, with... You know, with, Bria, uh, with Desi Arts, we don't know if it's going to happen, but it feels like all signs, all hints are leading to, you know, to that possibility occurring, you know, before we know it. You know, it's all leading to that possibility happening. But what I also see, you know, happening, you know, very similarly when it comes to uh, Lavender Stories, Emily Saunders series right now currently, is I do see one or two scenarios happening. Like I say, with Desi Arts uh, series, I feel you know it's possible that we're heading down that path. Not saying we are, but it's a possibility. But we just have to you know keep it you know keep an eye on that, keep reading to see if we head that way. But again, there are hints and everything that kind of say it's going to happen. When and where it's up it's up to Desi Arts. It's up to her, Michelle, if you will, to make that happen. But what Lava Stories series here, and what we currently are with Kathleen and Emily kind of now being, I guess you could say, frenemies, if not more than frenemies, kind of like bisexual lovers, if you will, of the LGBTQ. Um, what I see happening here is one of two things that I definitely feel will occur. We will either, we will either see a fusion between the two where they become one individual, maybe with the name Emmeline, which is a combination of Kathleen or Emmeline, you know, which is a um, combination of Emily and Kathleen, Emmeline. Um, I could see that where they become one individual temporarily so they can, you know, have fun with Jacob and everything, you know, and he can get the, both of, the best of both worlds, if you will, with both of them as one individual. Or... I could see, and this was just something I was thinking about earlier today, believe it or not, while I was working, because I was working on, you know, one trailer on my own, got that done, and I was thinking about this, you know, even while I was at break and coming back from break, because we have to walk down the, the warehouse to get from the break area to back to our section, you know, in the warehouse. And I was thinking about this, and the thought went through my mind is, you know, or the thought that went to my mind is, or was, is, you know, whatever, I'm tired, I do apologize. But the thought that went through my mind was, what if a lab story surprises us, and instead of having a fusion, where they become, you know, one individual temporarily to give Jacob the best of both worlds with them fused into one as MLN, if you will, what, you know, what would happen if maybe he decides to go a different route and instead of the fusion, we have Kathleen allowing Emily to absorb her completely. That's what kind of, that's kind of what, you know, I was, that's kind of something that I was thinking about. I was thinking, what if he goes that route to where, you know, Kathleen to make up for what she's done, you know, and to really want to be part of both Kat, uh, Emily and Jacob's lives she decides, you know, she decides to let Emily absorb her completely and make her one within her. In other words, her essence is now part of Emily and she can help influence Emily or give Emily ideas of what to do and everything creatively for a good time, if you catch my, my, catch my drift, when it comes to her fiancé, uh, husband, Jacob. You know, I was thinking about that. I'm thinking, well, okay, the fusion would be obvious, and, you know, they've kind of fused and merged together already, but what would happen if maybe she decides to let, you know, Emily, you know, to really make up for what she's done and to be part of both their lives? What if she allows Emily to completely absorb her and basically make her a part of her maybe forever? Who knows? 
you know, I, I thought, you know, to me, that would be an interesting scenario. And you could play off that. If you're a lavatory, you could play off, you know, you, you could play off of that, you know, in the future. You know, you really could. You could play off that by basically having, like, maybe the enemies that, you know, they've met and who've had their own stories, believe it or not, you know, kind of figure out or find out that Catherine and Emily are now one person. Or basically, Emily is the only one around because Catherine allowed herself to be uh, absorbed completely, allow her essence to merge with Emily's. And the way they are basically avoiding any detection of, hey, something's off here, is, you know, Emily could shapeshift herself into being Kathleen, and then maybe to really throw off any suspicion that something's up, you know, she could split herself in two, and one half is Kathleen, and one half is, you know, Emily. You know, those are just, um, you know, possibilities that have gone through my mind as to, you know, what could happen. Now, like I said, the fusion is still something that they can do. The fusion situation is still something they could potentially do uh, down the line, but we'd have to wait and see if, you know, Lava Story does that or they decide to go the route, I, you know, the other route that, as I mentioned, came, you know, came to my mind earlier today, you know, and that is the fact of what if, you know, maybe they end up fusing, or not fusing, but end up being, you know, having an absorption situation with Kathleen allowing herself to be absorbed completely into Emily and letting her essence merge with her, you know, because that would make things interesting in the long run because, again, you could have Kathleen, you know, influence Emily, you know, in, you know, certain, you know, decisions she can make to have fun with Jacob when they get intimate and maybe even allow her to have the knowledge of how to, run the company or run the division that she's in charge of, you know, when she has to disguise herself as Catherine or split herself in two, well, one is, well, one half is her and the other half is Catherine. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's something that I think would be really interesting uh, to see happen and occur uh, down the line, but that's just me. That's just my opinion. You know, as to what I think could happen, to what I think will um, happen, you know, you know, uh, in the future, in the, fu in the future. And like I said, I'm tired. I do apologize if I'm slurring on my words. Uh, but what do you guys think? What do you think would be the direction he could go in with, you know, the story next? If you guys are following Labor Story and all that on Patreon and DeviantArt and all that. Let me, guys, let, me, uh, let me know, guys. I'd love to hear from you on this. But anyway, that's really about it as to what's going on right now. It feels like we're heading in that direction. But what do you guys think? Do you think that's a possibility? Or do you think maybe, you know, he might just go with a straight-up fusion and, you know, be done with it? Let me know. Love to hear your thoughts on this uh, and down below in the comment section. You know, and everything. Let me know how you feel about it. And until next time, guys, like the video. Ring the bell for notifications, subscribe to the channel. Also, click on the links to all the places where you can find my, um, I guess you could say my uh, you know, my other stuff, if you will, my podcast, my Teespring store and all that. Click on the links. It will really help me out uh, in the long run. And I do apologize again, guys, for if I'm a little out of it, a little slurish here because, I, you know, like I said, I did work. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are. Comment below. Love to hear from each and every one of you. And until then... Um, until then, guys, I am out. God bless. Peace.